What's up everybody, welcome back to Chicken Noodle Gamer, where today I'm going to be ranking all six Paper Mario games. Now, I want to say that recently a new one came out, but it really isn't that recent anymore. It's It's been like months now this game has been out. People kind of stopped talking about it. I'm pretty late to the game, but I don't care. I've been playing the Paper Mario games for a while. I beat Origami King multiple times. I've beaten most of the Paper Mario games multiple times, and I thought I'd just share my opinions on all of them. So, let's get into it. Okay, so at our number six spot, I think we can all agree it obviously has to be Paper Mario the Thousand Year Paper Mario Sticker Star. Now, I have the game physically, but I lent it to a friend, so I just have the uh, strategy guide that I bought back in 2012 when the game first came out. <clears throat> now, my opinions on Sticker Star are pretty fucking similar to a lot of other people. It sucks. It took everything that Paper Mario stood for and tossed it in the trash. Now, I enjoyed it more than a lot of people, but that's not saying a lot because I didn't really enjoy it much, just more than a lot of people. Now, the battle system sucks. We all know it's got the fucking disposable stickers that nobody likes. All the characters are just generic toads with no personality. The story sucks. Bowser's the main villain. I don't have a problem with Bowser being the main villain. Bowser can be the main villain if he wants to. My problem is that he doesn't say a word at all. He acts like he's in a mainline New Super Mario Brothers game where he just roars. And that's his character. He's a big bad guy that roars. He doesn't say anything. Paper Bowser is such a highlight in the rest of the Paper Mario series. But not here, he just... he roars. Bad man roar. That is Bowser in this game, and it sucks. I gotta say, though, one good thing about the uh, strategy guide is it comes with a sticker sheet. It's all real stickers that I could just peel off and stick on anything at any moment. That's pretty cool. But that isn't even part of the game, so I don't know. All in all, Sticker Star kinda sucks. Alright, so for our number five spot, we have the sequel to Sticker Star, Paper Mario Color Splash. Now since this is the first game on the list with sort of a story, I'm gonna have to give a spoiler warning for the rest of the video because I'm gonna be spoiling the shit out of every game on this list. So if you don't care about spoilers, keep watching. There's not much to spoil with this game, but there is something to spoil with this game's story. So, you know, be warned. Now, I don't have a physical copy of Paper Mario Color Splash, so I thought I would just get the entire Wii U right here. So, Paper Mario Color Splash on this system is the sequel to Sticker Star. It improved a lot with Sticker Star. Paper Mario Color Splash had a lot of good things. It had very funny writing, but the character design still sort of sucked. Bowser talks, but he's still the main villain. Now wait, that is actually debatable. According to a lot of people, Bowser's the main villain. I mean, yes, technically, technically speaking, yes. But as it's revealed in the story after getting the sixth paint star and piecing together the entire memory that you're piecing together throughout the game, you find out that Bowser didn't really want to be bad in this situation. He just wanted to have a gay pride shell. And in doing so, he accidentally mixed all of the colored paints together in Port Prisma making the black paint possess him. So if you want to be speaking technically, the black paint is the villain, not Bowser. But since the black paint possessed a Bowser, Bowser is the villain. 
So, funny dialogue. Bowser is and isn't the villain. But he talks. They still have generic Toad Syndrome. It's just most of the characters are generic Toads, but at least you could actually talk to the enemies in Color Splash. In Sticker Star, the enemies, there were like two instances throughout the game where you can talk to enemies, but Color Splash, that's not the problem. Um, in Color Splash, there is more diverse locations, and although the characters don't have unique designs, they are, um, they do have personalities, some of them. Uh, there was something else I was going to say. <laughs> kind of forgot what it was. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Fuck. I'm not going to lie, I'm having a really hard time remembering what I was going to say. I had all these points planned out, and... I am just hitting a roadblock, my brain. I, I, to be fair, it's 2 in the morning, but I, I honestly can't remember. <sighs> Funny dialogue. Fucking Bowser talks. Unique location. I remember. Experience. This game sort of has experience. When you fuck a battle, when you beat it, when the battle is beat and done and dead... When the character explodes, you get three things. You get paints, coins, and hammer scraps. Hammer scraps is your sort of experience, because when you collect ha enough hammer scraps, then your max paint increases. It doesn't up your attack or defense or BP or FP or whatever, because that doesn't exist in this game. But it kind of is an incentive to battle. It doesn't work. It's not a good incentive to battle, but it is an incentive. That's an improvement from Sticker Star. That is what I was going to say. But now we got to talk about the battle system. The battle system sucks. It's still Sticker Star's battle system. It's tedious. Instead of stickers, it's cards. You've got to paint the cards. It's just dumb. But I did not find it as sluggish as other people found it. I actually didn't mind how long it took to select and power an attack. But it's still stupid. It still sucks. It still is nowhere close to the originals. That's all I have to say. Okay, so up to this point, my opinions have been pretty standard with most of the Paper Mario community. Sticker Star sucks, Color Splash is slightly better, but this is where my opinions are going to start getting controversial. Again, spoiler warning, but at our number four spot, is Super Paper Mario. Now hear me out, before you click off this video like a little bitch, hear me out, okay? Super Paper Mario, great story, amazing story, best in the entire series, very deep, very complex. Um, you get a, you get a, you get notified by a toad at the beginning of the game that Princess Peach has been kidnapped and Luigi's like, oh hey! That means that it must have been Bowser, but they don't want to say Bowser. They say it's the, the, they, they say it's a bad guy, but they go to Bowser's castle and like, oh shit. It was actually Count Black, some big bad guy, and he made Bowser and Peach marry each other to make a chaos heart. And Mario gets transferred to this place called a flip side where he meets Merlin and his partner Tippy. Tippy, a little butterfly pixel thing. And this game actually started the trend of having a floaty companion with you the entire time. Because Tippy was the beginning, and then there was Kirsty and Sticker Star, and then Huey and Color Splash, and then Olivia in the newest one, Origami King. So if you don't like the floaty, talkative companion, you can blame Super Paper Mario for that. Anyway. Mario's transferred to a place called Flipside, and he's told by Merlin that he has to collect the eight pure hearts if he wants to stop Count Black from, you know, destroying all universes. Because that's his evil plan. He wants to destroy all universes. Because of a book called The Dark Prognosticus. Now, between chapters, you slowly get these little weird dialogue things of, like, two lovers... And in the end, 
it turns out that Count Bleck is actually Blumier, who was in love with Timpani, who is actually Tippy, your partner for the entire game. And the thing that drove a wedge between them was the Dark Prognosticus. I'm not completely sure on all the details. I think that's what it is. But after you beat Count Black, they have an emotional moment and they reconnect. But, bam, plot twist that everyone saw coming. Dementio is actually the final villain because he makes Luigi into the mysterious Mr. L once again, which is something he was before, but you restored him. And he became a big, disgusting robot boss that I don't like looking at because its design is horrible. But it was a fun final boss. Story was great. That, that, all in all, the story was amazing. That's all, that's all I have to say about the story. But the reason it's ranked so low is the gameplay. Gameplay's horrible. I, I hate to say the gameplay sucks. Just sucks. It's a 2D platformer, but you still level up for some reason, which is like, okay, that's good, but I don't care. It took no effort to jump on this Goomba. Why am I leveling up for that? The whole reason experience points exist in RPGs is because you go through a turn-based combat sequence that takes a while. And the reason 2D Mario platformers don't have experience points is because it takes no effort and no time to jump on a Goomba. So why are experience points here? I can appreciate why they're there, but I don't see a reason for it. The 2D to 3D mechanic is great, but it doesn't benefit you. It's barely ever used. When you flip into 3D, the environments are very bland. There's not much more you see by flipping to 3D. It's just like, oh, hey, I flipped into 3D. Fucking whoop de do. Gameplay is bad. Gameplay is just bad, 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 bad. Everything about it is bad. I just do not like the gameplay. Plus, for such a short game, I beat this game in 15 hours. For such a short game, there is so much filler. There's... <clears throat> sixth chapter. Sixth chapter is a prime fucking example. In the sixth chapter of this game, you are put into a tournament, and it's like, hey, if you can defeat 100 of our guys, then you'll get this special treasure. So you go through like 25 battles, I think it was, 25 battles that are all virtually the exact same. You basically just switch to Bowser and go through copy-pasted rooms with copy-pasted enemies 25 times, just flaming the shit out of them. Just so Count Black can pop up at the end and destroy the entire world. So what was that for? That was for nothing. You did that for no reason. There's a lot of filler. That's why this game is so low. The gameplay sucks, story's great, averages out to a mediocre game. Okay, now this was a hard one to do, because after playing the games a lot, I found out that I actually like them pretty much equally. They both have their goods, they both have their bads, but I think that they're basically in the same spot. So number three and number two are the same, equal. That is... The original Paper Mario, I don't have a physical version, so I'm just going to hold up the EverDrive. And the latest Paper Mario, Paper Mario, the Origami King. Now, a lot of people are going to get mad at me for saying this, but allow me to make the comparisons. Paper Mario 64. It's a great start to the Paper Mario series. It sets the uh, turn-based battle system that will only be used for, you know, the next game. And then we'll be completely ditched, but anyway. Sets up a good turn-based battle system. Interesting characters. A cohesive world. Very nice. But Bowser is the main villain. Now, a lot of people give this a pass because it's like, oh, it's the first one. Bowser can be the main villain. Fuck you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry for the cussing. 
I didn't mean to do that. But shut up, because if you're gonna get mad at Sticker Star and Color Splash for having Bowser as the main villain, you can't defend this for having Bowser as the main villain. Now, admittedly, Bowser is a much better character in this game, opposed to those, but he's still Bowser. He's still just Bowser. Bowser, with the help of Kami Koopa, steals some magic stick from seven magic stars, and then turns seven magic stars into playing cards, and scatter them across the world. Now, this sets the, uh, all, this also sets the premise for going around the world to collect six or seven magic things, because that's what every Paper Mario does, except for Origami King, but we'll get to that. Mario Story is what this game was called, and that's because it was a storybook, not because it had a good story, because this game does not have a good story. The story is not good. The dialogue is good, the story is not. The only thing redeeming about the story is the Princess Peach interludes. That might just be me, but I did not like this game's story. It did not interest me in the slightest. It was it was just very dull. It was like, hey, Bowser stole the big thing. Go get these seven people to, so you can stop him now because he's apparently almighty because he has the star rod. Didn't like the story. But the gameplay, amazing. This is like this is like a fucking yin, yin and yang thing between this and Super Paper Mario. Bad story, good gameplay. While Super Paper Mario had great story, horrible gameplay, so you know. Yin yang. But gameplay great. Like I said, it's it's an RPG, it's a normal RPG, it's very good. The characters are good, the Interesting environments are interesting. Self-explanatory. A lot of things about this game are good. Your partners, the battle system, so many things are good, but I personally feel like it was bogged down by the story because I did not enjoy this game's story. Obviously a better story than Sticker Star and Color Splash, but still not really a good story. And some people will be like, oh, I give it a pass because it's the first game. You can't do that. You can't give it a pass just because it's the first one. You have to judge the game on its quality, not when it came out. Now, let's move on to Paper Mario The Origami King and why this is equal to the original. This game, this fucking game, I have a lot to say about this game. Now, there's two things that I really need to get off my chest. This is an RPG. This is an RPG. I don't care what you say. I don't care what the box says. I don't care what Kensuke Tanabe says. This is an RPG. The first two were RPGs. Super Paper Mario was not an RPG. Sticker Star was not an RPG. Color Splash was not an RPG. But this is an RPG, and I will explain why. The bare minimum for a role-playing video game is controlling the actions of a character in a well-defined world. The world in Super Paper Mario, not well-defined. I hate to say it, but it's not. It's not a well-defined world. The characters, very well-defined. The story is really good, but the world is not well-defined. Flipside is a little hub world, but how do you get to the chapters? Not by talking to some people in the hub town and then going through a path. No, you open a magic door and then it says chapter 1-1 and then it's just a level and then chapter 2-2 and it's a level. That is not a, a well-defined world. Same goes for Sticker Star and Color Splash with their bullshit world map stuff. Characters, not interesting. I don't feel like this world is lived in because I'm getting around through a fucking world map. Not a well-defined world. But Origami King, this is a well-defined world. It has civilizations, it has characters, it has people. The world is well-defined. I feel like this world is lived in. It is a good world. I like the characters. There may not be a lot of interesting characters, but the ones that are, are, if you catch my drift. Very interesting characters. <sighs> Another thing. Chapter-based structure. 
Not much I can say about this, but uh, this game has a chapter-based structure. The creators may say it doesn't, but it does. If they just put splash screens that said chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, like the original games did, bam, chapter-based structure. You don't have to add anything to have a chapter-based structure. So, there you go. And one more thing about the RPG thing that I forgot to say 30 seconds ago. If they would have just put RPG on here instead of Action Adventure, then people would be like, oh my god, it finally went back to being an RPG. But since it says Action Adventure, people are like, oh my god, why can't it go back to an RPG? They would not have to change this game. They would just have to change one word on the back of the box, and this game would be praised for being an RPG again, just because they said, hey, it's an RPG. Didn't have to change the game. And that is the hypocrisy. I don't know if that's the right word, but that's what I'm going with. That is what annoys me about people with this game. And also, this game functions more like an RPG than an action-adventure game. I just have to put that out there. Because a thing I've noticed recently is Zelda Breath of the Wild is listed as an RPG. I did not know that until recently. How is that an RPG, but this isn't? Please tell me. I would like to know that in the comments. But anyway, that's enough about my rant. Let's get into the actual game. The story in this game is good. There's not a lot of plot points, but the plot points that you get to are impactful. It feels like an actual story. Unlike Sticker Star and Color Splash. And the villain, King Ali, he is pretty cool. He, uh... Spoilers again. His whole deal is he wants to commit genocide. He wants to fold 1,000 origami cranes so he can get a wish granted. Now, the 1,000 origami crane technique is actually a thing from Japan. That's part of Japanese folklore, I, 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 I guess. And it was popularized by Sadako Sasiki. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that is a girl who got radiation poisoning from the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. Now, I don't know if it's a little bit of a stretch to make this connection, but isn't an atomic bombing like genocide? Kind of like King Ali wanting to commit toad genocide because there's uh, too many of them. They're all the same to him. Anyway, all in all, story good. Partners. Partners are back. Sort of. If you've watched any person talk about this game, you've heard those exact words. Partners are back, sort of, because everybody's been saying that. You don't control them in battle, but they do help in battle. They're mostly there for story purposes, though, like Bobby the bob -omb. About halfway through the game, in the beginning of Chapter 3, King Ali decides that he's going to pop in and attempt murder by trying to fucking kill his sister with a gigantic boulder, and Bobby thinks, hey, I have an idea. And you go on a little quest in an abandoned cruise ship, you find Gooper Blooper, and you get a chest, and you bring it back to that boulder, and it turns out that it is Bobby the bob -omb's missing fuse. And then he has an emotional speech, and he kills himself. He commits suicide to save Olivia. That is some sad stuff that happens in a Paper Mario game. Now, if you want to tell me when the original two Paper Mario games killed off a main character halfway through the game, I would be happy for you to tell me, because I've played both those games. I'm almost positive that that doesn't happen. I don't even think they kill off main characters in the first two. They may kill antagonists, like the Shadow Queen from the Thousand Year Door, but they don't want to kill main characters. I don't know what it is. I've noticed that. They kill a main character halfway through the game. In this game, it's just amazing. I love it so much. I don't know why my hair is being like this. Now, a big complaint is the battle system. I liked the battle system a lot in this game. The battle system was great. Bosses. Boss fights. Fun. 
Now, there are a few things I want to talk about the bosses, but first I'm just going to say a little more about the, uh, about the, uh, standard battles. Standard battles. A lot of enemies surround you. You have to solve a puzzle and then attack them. Now, you could like this and you could not. I veer towards liking it, but I could understand why a lot of people don't, because it's more of a puzzle than a strategic battle. I don't have a problem with that, but a lot of people do. So I'm not going to dwell on that for too long. There's not really much I can say about it. You just line them up and you kill them. You don't gain experience, but I think coins work if you buy all the accessories. Because if you want to buy all the accessories, which is like this game's excuse for badges, then coins are a good incentive, because there have been plenty of times where I bought an accessory and then was just dead on coins. I had only like 300 coins. Sounds like a lot, but it's not, because you get like tens of thousands of coins in this game. Boss battles. This is the last thing I'm going to say about this game, is the boss battles. Very fun. They put a spin on it. Instead of you being in the middle and enemies surrounding you, the boss is in the middle and you got to pl plot a pathway to the boss. Now this is cool, but one problem is upon replaying, a lot of the challenge is gone. Because most of the challenge in the boss battles is figuring out what to do and solving the puzzles. But when you already know what to do, there's not really a lot of challenge in the boss battles. Like, I could breeze through the boss battles if I replayed this game because I know the strategy. I didn't have to figure it out a second time. I can't just wipe my memory and then suddenly have the challenge back to the boss battle. And one more thing that annoyed me about the boss battle is every turn the things are set like randomly but every so often you'll reach a point where the path is already pre-plotted for you. I don't know if that's like a difficulty management thing like if you're about to die they'll do that but I've noticed that every so often when I'm fighting a boss I'll come across a turn where I literally just have to spin one ring and then I have a perfect path and I could attack the boss. I don't know if that's supposed to be like that or if it's just like some coincidence that happens every once in a while, but that kind of annoyed me. Generic Toads. Generic Toads still exist, but since King Ali is the main villain, that means a lot of the characters can also be Bowser's minions. Like some, like in the fifth chapter and sixth chapter, some of my favorite parts of the game, we're working with Kamek and Bowser Jr. and Bowser. Bowser is a great character. He, I think Bowser is back to his full glory with this game because he's really funny. He has some really funny lines. I just wish he had more screen time. He's basically there in the prologue and there in the final chapter and then just not for the rest of the game. I think they could have balanced out Bowser a little more, but, you know, whatever. It's fine. And really, I would love to put this on the shelf with the first two games in the series. I think this is more on par with the original Paper Mario's than Super Paper Mario is, in my opinion. A lot of people are going to disagree with me on that, but that is my opinion. Now, this is probably the longest segment because I talked about two games instead of just one, but I have a lot to say about Origami King. And let's move on to the number one game. Alright, big surprise. Thousand Year Door is number one. We all expected it. This is just the best. A near-perfect RPG, great characters, great environments, great story, not as good as Super Paper Mario, but better than Origami King and the original Paper Mario. Now, this game does not come without its flaws. There is a lot of backtracking. Most of the chapters rely on you running back and forth. That's most of the chapters. Chapter 1 is like that. Chapter 2 is not like that, nor is Chapter 3. But Chapter 4 is heavy in the backtracking. Twilight Town, literally, it's a straight path to the end, and you just go back and forth. The chapter starts with a town. And pretty much what you have to do is you 
run out of the town, you find a key, you run back, you get cursed, you uh, you run a little farther this way, but then you have to run all the way back, and then you run a little farther, and then you run all the way back, and then you run a little farther, oh hey, you reach the castle, you fight a boss, but fuck you, your body is snatched now, so you've got to run all the way back, and then you get a partner, and you run all the way there again, and then all the way back. And then all the way there, and bam, you could fight the final boss. How fun! <laughs> chapter 5. Not very heavy on the backtracking. Nor is Chapter 6. Chapter 7. Chapter 7 is the ultimate backtracker. You go to every chapter. You go to every chapter. Chapter... Chapter 7 is split into two parts. The ice land with the Russian bob and then the moon. When you get to the moon, there's not a lot of backtrack, and the moon part is good, but the first part? Backtrack crazy. Literally. You have to backtrack to every single chapter. Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3, Chapter 4, Chapter 5, Chapter 6, Chapter 7, and talk to specific people to figure out where this one bob character is, General White, and then it turns out that General White was there in the ice land with the Russian bob the entire time. I mean, he, not, not the entire time. He's not there when you embark on this chapter revisit journey, but he's there when you're done with it. Now, I went on a kind of rant about the backtracking, but this game is still amazing. Gameplay is amazing. Characters are amazing. One more problem I had was Grotus. Grotus is the main villain, and he is not interesting in the slightest. He has no character. He is just a bad villain. Villain. That's all Grotus is. He is just a mysterious villain. Now, Count Black and King Ali are both mysterious villains as well, but they have backstory. You slowly come to know them and why they're doing these bad things. But with Grotus, it is not like that. It is not like that with Grotus. You do not learn anything about him. He is just bad. He is evil. He is mysterious. And then at the end, he just gets fucking killed by the Shadow Queen. You learn nothing about him. You know his plan, but you know nothing about him. I do not know where this robot came from. I do not know Grotus's origins. I don't know how he got these Exonauts to start following him. All I know is he's evil and that I should stop him. Grotus is not a good character. I like that Bowser isn't the main villain, but Grotus is not a good character. I think we could all agree on that. Now, one more thing I want to say before I end this list is a uh, common misconception about this game is that it doesn't take place in the Mushroom Kingdom. A lot of people think just because you're in Rogueport means you're not in the Mushroom Kingdom. And I thought that for a long time, too, until I actually read the game's manual. It says here, on the first page, a letter from Peach. Let's read this, shall we? Hello there, Mario. I am now on holiday, traveling in the Mushroom Kingdom. In my travels, I came into possessions of a mystical map. A treasure map, actually. It was inside a box I got from an old merchant in a town called Rogueport. Now tell me where in that excerpt did it say she left the Mushroom Kingdom? It said she's traveling the Mushroom Kingdom and found a treasure map from a merchant in Rogueport. So Rogueport is part of the Mushroom Kingdom. They do not leave the Mushroom Kingdom in the Thousand Year Door. So technically, Super Paper Mario and Paper Mario Color Splash are the only two games in the Paper Mario series where you actually leave the Mushroom Kingdom. Which I actually found very interesting. All in all, Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, near perfect RPGs, minimal flaws. There's two flaws, backtracking and Grotus. Those were the two problems I had with this game. Otherwise, amazing. Beautiful game. Amazing characters. Great environments. Amazing. I know I said this like five times already, but it's a damn near perfect RPG. And I love it. Anybody who hasn't played this game should go and play it because. It's beautiful. Now, all in all, 
I am a big fan of the Paper Mario series. It's a great series. I can say I genuinely enjoyed every entry in this series. Even Sticker Star, despite the fact that that game sucks the biggest dicks. Amazing series, interesting characters for most of them, interesting stories for a lot of them, but some of them just suck in the gameplay department. I'm looking at you, Super Paper Mario. But the Thousand Year Door has its flaws, so does the original, so does Origami King. All the games have their flaws, some are worse than others. Color Splash. Some have really good writing, but very bad gameplay. Super Paper Mario and Color Splash. Some are really good RPGs bogged down by a mess story. Original Super Paper Mario. I can go on and on about all these games and their ups and downs, but I'd be here for hours. And we all know that this is probably a half hour long video already. So for anyone who stick around, stuck around, whatever, I'm bad with punctuation, thank you. And I'll see you in the next one, which will probably be the official Origami King review. Bye bye